The compact SUV space has been growing rapidly and one of the recent entrants into the segment is the MG Aster. Now we've already driven this car but that was on the BIC, that is the both international circuit and on a track you really don't know how a car will behave in an urban environment. To find out just that, we've had the Aster for a few days and today we're going to tell you exactly how is it to live with. Hi, my name is Dhruv Paliwal, you're watching AutoX and today we are driving the MG Aster with the 1.3 turbo petrol engine and a 6-speed torque converter. The MG Aster is the biggest car in its class, barring the Nissan Kicks. But you might find it hard to believe just by looking at it. That's because MG paid homage to its European roots in the Aster's design. You don't find that macho, in-your-face styling that its Korean rivals are chasing, but instead there are clean lines all over the MG Aster. In fact, the roof line is sloping towards the back and it gives it more of a crossoverish design rather than an SUV. Even the elements used in the Aster's design are very graceful, like the celestial grille up front, the tail lamps which are LED, the headlamps which have projectors in them, and many such more things. Overall, be it in your driveway or while being driven out on the road, the Aster has a very understated European design and that makes it stand out. Alright, let's talk about the first row of the Aster. Now as you might have already heard, the Aster's interior, it's a very premium place. I definitely love this black and red, uh, sangria red interior they have here. It looks very premium, it looks unlike most cars in the segment. And uh, overall, there's not a lot you can fault over here. The finish and fit and finish quality of everything is really great. There's only one problem I have and that's this gear lever. It's a little rickety and I don't know if it's just a problem with the test car or it's on all the units, but apart from this, everything else has been finished really well. Okay, as far as features are compared, the Astor, obviously, there are a few glaring misses. You have no wireless charging, you have no ventilated seats, and a couple of things like that. But you do get a lot of premium stuff on around, like the touchscreen here. The touchscreen is a very good system. I mean, the display is clear, it's crisp, but... I think there are a lot of software glitches in here. Sometimes the system just behaves weirdly. For example, I muted a song and five minutes later, it just unmuted it itself. And it kept on happening. And then suddenly uh, the AI robot comes on and it feels like I'm talking to it, whereas I'm not doing it. And when I did try talking to it, it kind of didn't work. So there are technical glitches and I think these can be handled better with software updates. Uh, but as of now, they do take away a little bit from the experience of sitting inside the Aster. Uh, you have this nice armrest here, again, very good material, uh, deep space inside here, you've got two cup holders in the centre, you've got ample storage for a one litre bottle and some other knickknacks in the doors. Overall, in terms of design, it's a very clean design and you like sitting inside the cabin of the Aster. Okay, one thing here, the Aster, it's a very premium car, but this Aya VM, it's not an auto unit, it's a manual unit and not the best of feelings. Alright, let's hop into the back now. Alright, the story of quality materials continues into the second half, that's the second row of the cabin. Everything you touch is feels like it's been well made. And you've got uh, rear AC vents over here, you've got two USB charging ports, you've got uh, storage in the doors, and you've got headrests for all three passengers in the back seat. Although this back seat is only big enough for two adults and a child, then you have this massive panoramic sunroof, I mean it stretches all the way back till here. And despite that, I am 5'7 and I have decent headroom. The one thing here is that this panoramic sunroof, while it's great when you don't have the sun directly on top of your head coming inside the cabin, even when the pane, the curtain is closed, it's a see-through curtain. So you can still feel the sun coming in. And on really hot days, it will heat up your cabin even more. And that's something that MG should have looked at when giving this kind of a blind. Apart from that, the seating position, okay. So if you tuck your feet underneath the front seat, and there is a lot of space to do that, the front seat has been set to my driving position. So I have enough acres of knee room and leg room over here. Although the one thing I would have liked 
is that if the seat base was slightly longer so that I could get a little bit better under thigh support. The recline is great, it's at a perfect angle. I'm going to be comfortable sitting here even on long journeys. And you also get ISOFIX mounts here if you want to put in a child seat. So that's the rear of the cabin. Why don't we go drive the car now? Alright, so when you start driving the Astra, the first thing that you will immediately notice is how smooth it is. I mean, the refinement levels on the Astra are really high. The engine, it's a three-cylinder. And MG doesn't tell you that because it's not written in the brochure. It feels like a four-cylinder. If you didn't know this was a three-cylinder engine, you would call it a four-cylinder. And that's the highest amount of praise I can give it. There's, you don't hear that three-cylinder thrum. There are no vibrations at idle or at anywhere in the rev range. So yeah, refinement is a great big plus. As far as the engine is concerned, there's ample amount of torque in the bottom end, there's good amount of torque in the mid-range. But the way this engine builds power is that it builds it in a very linear fashion. So you never feel the turbo punch kick in or you never really feel yourself pinned back in your seat. And that's a good thing because it keeps you comfortable. If you're not looking for a sporty experience, you really wouldn't miss it. So that's that. Okay, the one con here is that if you rev it all the way to its 5600 RPM redline, then it starts to feel just a little bit strained. And it's not too strained and it's only because the engine is so refined that you even feel that. So you really don't want to take it all the way there. If you're in automatic mode with the transmission, it'll just keep shifting. If Even if you're uh, revving the car, it'll shift around 4000, 4500. It won't take you all the way to the top. It's only when you slot it into the manual mode and take over uh, the control for the gear changes is when you can actually rev it all the way there and you feel that slight bit of strain on the engine. Overall, this 6-speed torque converter, it's also a great unit. It's completely geared for comfort. No matter how hard you try to push the Aster, the gearbox stays calm, stays composed. It will take its time to shift, but it never falters. I mean, if you put your foot down, it will for a second hesitate before shifting a gear down and then revving all the way. That's not the way to drive the Astro. Be gentle and linear with your inputs just like the engine is in its power delivery and you will feel that you can build speeds of up to 100, 120, even past that with relative comfort. But if you want all that torque in one go and if you match the throttle, it's when the engine and the transmission, they just don't work together because they've not been tuned in such a manner and that's where you feel that this car just lacks a little and that's why I would say that the overall experience of driving this car is not a very sporty one. Now the steering, the ride, the handling, all right, the steering has three modes, they are urban, normal and dynamic and you feel the steering way up differently in all three, the urban being the lightest and dynamic being the most uh, heavy steering. But it's not like you're, it's adding any feel or feedback and honestly you don't need all of those things in a car like this. The steering on its own is feel, it's, it's a little quick, it's a quick steering so yeah you can zip in and out of traffic once you get comfortable with it. As far as the ride is concerned now MG has done a superb job of tuning this car for comfort. I mean no matter, bad roads, good roads, whatever the roads, the MG Aster's cabin stays composed, you don't see any kind of movement here too much although on highways at higher speeds because the suspension is softly sprung you can feel it bob up and down just a little bit but that's not too big a thing and i think once you have uh, a couple of more people in the car the car it also lowers down because of the extra weight and that problem kind of disappears at that point of time and honestly I didn't shoot it, but I found a bad piece of road and I was literally gunning the Aster over all the bumps and it soaked in everything. It's only when you try to make direction changes while going over bad stuff that the suspension can start to feel a little floaty and you might feel uh, the car kind of bouncing around a little bit. But it's not something that's unpredictable. A couple of times, once you experience that feeling, once you get used to it, you will know how to react to it and it's not something that will catch you unaware. Alright, so it's time to sum up this video and if I had to use just one word to define the Astro, it would be comfortable. 
the engine, the transmission, the ride quality, everything has been tuned to keep you comfortable inside the cabin. However, the one word that doesn't go with the Aster is sporty. Again, the engine, the gearbox and the ride quality, all of it, none of it have any sporty genes. And for that reason alone, if you're looking for a comfortable car, be it the city or the highway, then the Aster should be on the top of your list. However, if you're looking for a sporty experience, maybe you should look elsewhere. All right, that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, do like it, do share it with your friends and obviously subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time we put out a video. Until the next video, goodbye.